that manifesto. First E being the employment, looking to the uh, majority of our youth uh, starving after getting education, having no employment. So therefore employment was made the first E. The second E, she announced that should be education, which is the basic basic facility which, the, which every child should get. And then energy, environment and equality. Therefore, this was my passion that I should implement the vision of my great leader Mautama Benaji Puttu Shaheed by improving the education in my province. When I took over as Minister of Education, I was shocked to know that the primary, secondary and higher secondary school education was not in the control of the provincial government. It was the functioning of all these schools were about 7,700 primary schools were closed in the province of Sen. While the total number of closed schools in the whole country was 15,000. It's more than half of the primary schools, closed primary schools were in our province. And this was confirmed by the World Bank team, made me shortly after I took over as Minister of Education. They confirmed the report of the Education Department and then I felt that I was in a great trouble because to reopen those 7,700 schools was a great challenge for me to work very hard and I sacrificed my private life. I uh, sacrificed my family, giving time to them. My wife is here. She was. She's always angry with me that why you chose education. But I, I, I told her that someone had to do it. Why not me? It's true that I'm a lawyer. I sacrificed my profession, my livelihood. But Alhamdulillah, party gave me the honor to work for the vision of my leader. So I started from the scratch. I got surveyed all the closed schools, why they are closed. I found that 1100 schools were ghost schools, they were not schools. They were getting the resources from the government of the education department, but in fact they didn't exist. Although half of them were shelter less, more than half, and the less than half there were buildings, constructed buildings were being used as parks, barracks, and houses. So I immediately deleted their resources. First job I did that they should not get money. They were not only occupying the government buildings, but they, they were also receiving free textbooks, uh, SMC funds, every every you know uh, funding. Everything they were getting. So therefore I stopped that and I published the list of those schools in the newspapers, in all the major newspapers, inviting the objections from the communities. If there was a wrong report, they should raise objection. No, sir, they are strong. And believe me, not a single complaint I received from anywhere, proving that those 1100 schools were actually ghost schools. Then I got surveyed, you know, in the media I was listening that there are uh, education officers, but instead of this, if you come to the conclusion that it, it was a fact that poor students from the remote areas were deprived of being tested, we should go for another round and give them chance to appear. <coughs> and test them, we have got the money. We, we, we should not waste our money. We should give the 
scholarship to the proper child. It's, it is just to encourage them. But as far as the standards of education is concerned, poor, the primary education is in a very bad shape, I may confess. But we are trying to improve it. You know, the exemption system, assessment system. We have established the direct way of monitoring and assessment, which was not in place. The first time that the government of India decided to assess and monitor, you know, we, we don't want to leave them uh, to, at their own to do whatever they want. The headmasters are being empowered, but with the condition of delivery results, if they don't deliver, we are going to give them a good package. And I am really very happy for the offer of the management, the approved policy of the government. We want to separate the 